selling water fluoridation, they didn't just walk out and say it's good for you. They actually hired Edward Bernays, Sigmund Freud's nephew, to sell Americans on how good it was to have silicone fluoride in the water. Edward Bernays was the one that created how to control the population through media and through advertising. Edward Bernays, also known as the father of spin, pioneered the idea of crowd psychology. In 1928, he wrote a book called Propaganda, in which he wrote, If we understand the mechanism and motives of the group mind, is it not possible to control and regiment the masses according to our will without their knowing it? He called it the engineering of consent. Bernays introduced the corporate giants to crowd psychology methods and polished techniques to manipulate society. He convinced the population to buy on impulse things they didn't even need. In his writings, he concluded that individuals were controlled by four basic motivations, self-preservation, aggression, security, and sex. Bernays' belief was that by appealing to any of these four motives, it was possible to manipulate the majority of the population into doing almost anything. You could brainwash them into smoking cigarettes, starting war, electing politicians, you name it. And given the proven effectiveness of these techniques, it was no coincidence that the Aluminum Company of America asked Bernays to head the campaign for the fluoridation of the United States water supply. People like Bernays, you know, were masters of social engineering. His entire thesis, if you will, is that you don't talk to the public in a rational, scientific way. Instead, you appeal to their emotions and you invoke their fears. He was key in getting women to start smoking. He positioned cigarettes as being sexy and individualistic and, you know, power to the woman. That was the, the framing of why women should start smoking. A consumerist culture was born, and the United States government took notice. U.S. agencies soon adopted Bernays' techniques of manipulation to manufacture the fear of ever-present danger in the minds of the people, to give those in power greater control of what Bernays called the mass mind. He went on to propose in his book Propaganda, those who manipulate this unseen mechanism of society constitute an invisible government which is the true ruling power of our country. We are governed, our minds are molded, our tastes formed, our ideas suggested, largely by men we have never heard of. This statement holds just as true today as it did in the 20s when Bernays first wrote it. Throughout medical science, including dentistry, Poison-producing corporations have always been able to infiltrate major institutions and dominate their narrative. When Christopher Bryson was writing this book, The Fluoride Deception, he reached out to Edward Bernays. Bernays said it was child's play to convince the American public that fluoride was good for them. While the official narrative rang, the case for fluoride had been proven. Some people weren't so quick to jump on the fluoridation bandwagon because fluoride had been used for years as a rat poison to kill coyotes, to kill cockroaches. Some of those opposing fluoridation were in fact dentists. And because of their advocacy for safe water, they were censored by the American Dental Association. If they worked for the public health service, they got fired. If they were team players and kept their mouth shut, they got to keep their job. So out of fear, many people who knew better remained silent. The true story behind water fluoridation can be hard to swallow. The facelift performed on fluoride dating back more than 60 years ago has misled generations. Instead of conjuring up the image of a crippled worker or a poisoned forest, we see smiling children. As a new generation arises, we must sound the alarm yet again. To those who have ears to hear, this film is meant to be a warning. This film will prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that fluoride is a deadly poison being added to our water supply. It will further prove that the chemical commonly known as fluoride is the only chemical added to public drinking water to treat you, the individual, rather than the water. The information presented in this film can change your life. It can help protect your health and the health of your loved ones. It will lay out the real facts behind water fluoridation. It will expose the hidden hand behind the curtain, pulling the levers of industry, corporate profit, and public perception. Fluoridation is neither safe nor effective, but rather a fraud.
and honestly, one of the biggest hoaxes ever perpetrated in human history. To say things like, tobacco is harmless, fluoride is harmless, Agent Orange is harmless, they say, DDT was harmless. Asbestos, right? Yeah, GMOs now, they say, are harmless. This is a long history of science selling out to corporate interests while the people are systematically poisoned. And to this day, people still believe fluoride is safe in the drinking water, and the majority of dentists still believe it's safe to put in toothpaste and to put in uh, different types of compounds. Most people in America are persuaded that everybody fluoridates their water. And you, if you're living in a town like Albany or Long Island or Ithaca or somewhere, but the vast majority of the population of the world does not drink fluoridated water. Most of the countries do not fluoridate the water, only about 30. The countries now that have banned the use of fluoride, uh, China, Austria, Belgium, Finland, Germany, Denmark, Norway, Sweden, the Netherlands, Hungary, and Japan. These, all these countries have said that fluoride, number one, is ineffective and toxic and should not be used. We are still using it. There's something wrong here. I think it's time that uh, we become aware and do something about it. How come our country that's supposed to be, quote, so smart, uses it. Well, there's something going on here. What does the European Union know that we don't know? Nothing. Nothing. They know the same thing, that's why. But the difference is they're not getting paid off and we are. And so therefore, this is what the only thing I can come up with because they both have the same facts. They both have the same facts. Fluoride is toxic. Fluoride is not helping your teeth. If it was really helping your teeth, why do we have all these dental problems? It's not at all. How come you can go to primitive societies around the world that never had even seen fluoride and they have perfect teeth? Why are we having all these learning disorders? How come we're having autism? We're having all these things we never had before. Well, why don't we ask that question and answer it honestly? Answer it honestly. 98% of Europe does not fluoridate. Only eight countries in the world have more than 50% of their population drinking water. America, Australia, New Zealand, Ireland, Israel, Singapore, Malaysia, and Colombia. Only eight. I think Europeans have come to their senses on, on several issues, not all of them, but on many. GMOs being one of them and fluoride being another. They've rejected these things because they're looking at the evidence. America tends to be way behind the curve on really recognizing reality in the realm of, of fraudulent hoax science. Our CDC and the liars in Washington, D.C. have only had success in countries that speak English for the vast majority of the disposal of their hazardous waste product. That means that you and I and our children in the United States are the largest consumers of hydrofluosilicic acid. Call it what it is. Hydrofluosilicic acid, what is that? Hydro is water, fluo, fluoride, silicic, sand, and it's missing an electron, it's acidic. It'll kill you. You take your hand dipping in like that and you're gonna die. Hydrofluosilicic acid does not occur in nature. It's a man-made molecule. And it eats through concrete, glass, stainless steel, fiberglass, plastic, you name it, it'll eat it. So why are we putting that in the water? First tonight, hazmat crews from all across our area responded to a chemical leak this afternoon in Rock Island. The chemical was so strong that it was burning through the concrete there. News 8's Christy Mergenthal has the latest. It was just before 1 o'clock Thursday afternoon when hazmat crews were called to the Rock Island water treatment plant for a chemical spill coming from this tanker truck. The chemical hydrofluoro sicilic acid is used to add fluoride to the plant's water. After several hours, crews were able to clean up the leak, allowing operations to return to normal. They had to cordon off the area, obviously, but as far as uh, the treatment of the water and the, the amount of water uh, you know, being used by the public, there's no effect on that at all. Now that acid that did spill out is a chemical that they actually use every single day here at the water treatment plant. It adds fluoride to the water. Reporting live in Rock Island, Christy Mergenthal, WQAD Quad Cities News 8. That's how they transport it. It's, it's extremely aggressive. It'll eat, it'll eat through almost anything, including concrete. What is labeled fluoride is not naturally occurring fluoride, like you might find in the ground. 
It's actually a collection. It can be over a hundred different chemicals, including some radioactive chemicals, including many cancer-causing chemicals, including heavy metals, uh, neurologically damaging elements that are called fluoride. And then this is dumped into the water supply and the cities have the doctors and dentists convinced that this is somehow good for your teeth. Fluoride is really a clever way for industry, the mining industry, the chemical processing industries, aluminum smelting and processing industries, to eliminate their toxic industrial waste without having to pay for it to be handled as industrial waste. They just slap a new label on it, fluoride. They sell it to cities and the cities dump it into the water supply. Basically is a hazardous waste byproduct of the manufacture of phosphate fertilizer. It's a mining byproduct. They dig up this rock. This rock is no good as is. So you mix it with sulfuric acid and this produces soluble phosphate. And that's what becomes the fertilizer. It's a byproduct that they can't do anything with. It's a poison. So they sell it and make fluoride out of it. It was a fraud. It was a scam from the get-go. It is a means of getting rid of fluoride. You allow industry to use your water supply to dispose of their hazardous waste. It's a disposal mechanism. It's an industrial, a major industrial waste pollutant. They were trying to dump it into the rivers that were going out into the ocean in Florida. And boy, they stopped that. They said, you're polluting, you're killing the fish, you're, and which they were. For a hundred years, they decimated the local vegetation, crippled the cattle, damaged the citrus groves in Florida. It was costing them a fortune to handle this as a very serious industrial waste. And so they're helping Cargill get rid of their hazardous waste problems. Cargill is the largest privately owned corporation in the world. They were also the largest producer of hydrofluosilicic acid. Cargill at one time had like 90% of the market. When the hurricanes went through Florida, they knocked out the holding pond, so there was a shortage of hydrofluosilicic acid. And so they reached out to the rest of the world, and now we get it from Mexico and Japan and China, because none of those countries allow fluoride in the water supply. They don't, they don't put it in at all, so it obviously it's piling up in those countries. I don't think we need to be helping other countries out with their disposal of fluorosilicic acid. Fluoridation is the worst recycling practice in the world, so I support recycling. But to take the hazardous waste from the phosphate fertilizer industry, which cannot be dumped into the sea by international law, and cannot be used locally because it's too concentrated, and to take that product and put it into our public drinking water is sheer lunacy. It's bizarre. I mean, George Orwell Kafka could have written this play. It's, it's, it's lunacy. There are 250,000 tons dumped annually in the water supply. Does that sound like a big figure to you? If you had one ton and were worth over a million dollars, you'd be a poor person by the time you got rid of that ton. It's extremely expensive to get rid of.